Hi Bethlehem friends, my name is Michelle Thompson. This is my kitchen at home. Uh, it's time for St. Nicholas Day and we usually have our annual St. Nicholas Festival. And as you know, because it's 2020, we can't have it at the church this year, but we didn't want the occasion to pass without celebrating. And St. Nicholas informed us that he fully intended on visiting us at Bethlehem, whether we were there in person or not. So we've put together a fun project and you'll get all the supplies to make this. And what it's gonna be, it's gonna be a Pop-Tart gingerbread house. This is the house that hasn't yet been decorated. You will have all the supplies, you'll have the Pop-Tarts, you'll have some decorating candies and you'll have the royal icing that's been specially formulated for this house. So that will all be in your kit. So the first thing that you need is six Pop-Tarts. Two of the Pop-Tarts will be the roof of your house. So you can just take two Pop-Tarts and put them aside and save those for your roof. Then you're gonna need two end pieces that have the little pitched roof here. And the way that you're gonna make those is you're gonna take two Pop-Tarts and you're gonna lay one on the side of it like that. And then you're gonna take a knife and you wanna use a serrated knife, which is a knife that has little jagged edges. If you use a regular knife, you're gonna crack the Pop-Tart. So you wanna make sure you use a serrated knife. So you wanna put the Pop-Tarts one long ways and one short ways and you're going to use that as a cutting guide to make that pitched roof so that looks about right so you want to kind of gently saw through and then you have little extra pieces left over which is kind of fun because those you can snack on when you're done and then you're going to want to take it and lay it on the other side and do the same thing And that way you have the perfect end piece for your pop for your pop tart house all right so then we need to make another one of these so they're not perfect but they're close enough that'll work okay and then you need two short sides see the house there has two sides so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pop tart and you're gonna use your your peaked roof piece and you're gonna use that as a guide to make your side and if you're not getting all of this, don't worry, because there'll be a link uh, on the virtual St. Nicholas Festival uh, video that has all the detailed, professional detailed instructions. Okay, so we have two sides, two peaked ends, and two roofs, and one chimney. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is make the royal icing. So you'll have a bag like this in your kit. And so all you need to do is dump the bag into a bowl. And this is some warm water. And this is a, a one tablespoon measuring cup, measuring spoon. You wanna use one and a half tablespoons. So this is an interesting measuring spoon because it's got a little line so that's one tablespoon, and this one has a little line so I can see where the half tablespoon line is. And that's a half tablespoon. Okay, and then I'll keep this water nearby. If it seems too dry, I can add a little bit of water, but I think it'll, it'll work. I made it before and I thought it didn't seem like enough water, but it was. And then you can either use a mixer like this, a hand mixer like this, or you can use um, you know, a stand mixer. And if you use a stand mixer, it'll probably mix a little bit faster um, and you can do a lower speed. I'm gonna do a pretty high speed on this, on mine. So let's see how it goes. That's pretty good. So inside your kit, you're gonna have a pastry bag like this. And it comes with a couple of different tips. Um, 
and some of them are fancy, but for this, I think I'm just gonna use the, the basic one, the simple one. And you're gonna need a spoon, a squeaky drawer. I'm gonna open this up. And you're gonna start spooning it in. patient because you have to let the icing set up. So you're going to take one of your one of your peaked sides and you're going to make a line of icing down there. And this is good if you have a brother or sister that can do it with you. Because the more hands you have holding it, it makes it a little bit easier. So you gotta hold it for a little while to get it to stick. And I know the exciting part when you're making a gingerbread house is decorating, but it's really good if you let the icing set up for maybe a half an hour after you've built your house. pretty fragile now so you want to let that sit you can even make it the day before and then decorate it the next day because it's still a little fragile with that loose frosting All building so this house I built last night and so you can see that it's it's pretty sturdy so as I as I decorate it it's not going to be uh, falling apart on me so this one will just let it we'll let it rest up and we can decorate that later so it's hard to be patient when you have candy around so this is where you can get creative and what I did is I transferred the frosting to just a regular sandwich Ziploc baggie because I was having too much of a hard time with that bag. So you could do the same thing or you could just put it in a baggie to start and then I snipped the corner off of it. So then you can just use it kind of like, like glue and then just hold it for a minute. powdered sugar to look like snow. They're all gonna look different, but they're gonna be fun to make. And we'd love to see how your gingerbread house turns out. Send a picture to the church office and we can post it on our Facebook page and see what everybody's houses look like. So Merry Christmas, Happy St. Nicholas Day, 